Hey, what's happening, guys? Sorry for the drought of no videos, but, uh, man, last weekend I just got absolutely nailed by some sort of virus. Not the coronavirus, turns out. And it just put me on my back. I'm, this is my first, this is Thursday. This is, uh, St. Patty's Day. This is the first day I have been out of bed in like three days. So, whew, it was rough. But anyway, I'm here. Remember we did a video a couple weeks ago where we talked about the effect of track thickness in current carrying abilities. Well, a good friend of mine, Barry, down in Florida, taught me a little trick I didn't know about to enhance uh, a track thickness using solder wick. And we're going to try that. But I figured while we're at it, and I've got a couple of these boards left over from PCB weight, we take a look at a couple of different methods of getting the solder mask off of the tracks. Because, you know, me, I've always been a scraper. But apparently there's some other ways to do it. So I figured we'd take a look at them. Maybe have some fun. Learn something along the way, right? This video is sponsored by PCB Way. And what I wanted to share with you guys today was this right here. The PCB assembly service special. $30 for one to 20 pieces. That's through hole and surface mount device. So if you've got an idea, but you don't feel like soldering those surface mount devices, let PCB Way do it for you. All right, like I said, I have always been a scraper. So I've got a brand new blade here in the box cutter. I might even take it out of the box cutter, we'll see. But this is the way I've always done it. Just scraping. And you can see it's a it's a pretty effective tactic for removing the solder mask. We're getting down there so we can see the copper. Of course, the idea here is just to scrape and not to uh, not to dig. So that's method number one. Now, method number two that I've heard is to use whoa, an ink eraser or pencil eraser, whatever, because it is going to have some abrasive in it. So let's see how that goes. This may absolutely be the wrong kind of eraser. Yeah, that's a... That's not going anywhere. So again, that might be the wrong kind of eraser. And the final method is to use a stainless steel or brass wheel in a Dremel. So let me get that set up. We'll give that a try. Okay. So I got the wheel set up in the Dremel. Not really Dremel, but you get the idea, right? We'll go at a nice low speed and very gently. Alright, so that worked all right. I would be very worried about breaking the contacts, you know, breaking the track, the trace. Let's try it again here on the uh, on the bigger trace. Let's see what we get. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. After all that mess, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, it, it'll work, but it's 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 done too much damage. I mean, if you look in there, we've we've gone down into the layers of the board. I I think I honestly think that your best bet in doing this is just going to be the simple scrape. Just like that. Takes two seconds. I'm sure there's probably some chemical methods as well. But, I mean, if you got to remove so much stuff that you're resorting to chemical, then maybe, maybe you just need to respin the board. Yeah, I mean, a razor blade is, in my opinion, the way to go with this. All right, so let's move on from that and talk about increasing the current carrying capabilities. You remember this video we did a couple weeks ago where we talked about this, right? And we talked about power supplies and how oftentimes on power supplies, what you will see is just a strip of solder laid over top of the bare copper. You're increasing the surface area, so you're increasing the current carrying current blah, blah, current carrying capabilities, right? That's a little kludgy there, but you get the idea. So if we wanted to increase this even more, what we could do is get some super fine solder wick and see if we can't embed it into this. And to do that, I'm just going to add some more solder here. Lay it on nice and thick. You got a bit of a dirty area down there, but it's all right. So now we can get our solder on there, or our solder wick on there, rather. And solder wick's another thing that you really shouldn't cheap out on if you can help it. Um, Good wick is a great brand. Kester makes some as well. You know, anything, any of the big name brands, you're going to be good on. All right, so now that we've laid that down there, we can go like this. I want to push it off track. And now we've got our original copper layer. We've got a layer of solder. And then on top of that, we've got the solder and the solder wick together. So we've got, oh, probably 10 times the thickness there. And that will definitely help increase our current carrying capabilities. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I want to thank Barry for uh, giving me these ideas. And thank PCBWay for being the major sponsor of this channel and making all this possible. Couldn't do it without him. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.